You've heard the stereotype black people can't swim, but wait till you find out the shocking history behind that. It's obviously not true that every black person cannot swim. That's a stereotype. But it is true that black kids die from drowning three times more than white kids in the United States. And just under 70% of black American kids can't swim. So there's that. But how? This is what they don't want you to know about this stereotype. But before I really get into this, please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps this channel and it pushes the algorithm to show this to people who also need to hear this. Hit that bell as well to get notified for more history facts. And check out the podcast version of this on Spotify and Apple Music. Now let's get into this. In America during the 1920s and 1930s, pools were getting built left and right. There were even a lot in the poor immigrant white areas but there was almost none in the black areas. On top of that, these pools were segregated. So even if the black people wanted to travel to the white areas to swim, they'd get greeted with a punch to the face, literally. There were thousands of huge pools and resort pools opening up with millions of white people swimming. And if one opened in a black area, it would typically be a little paddle pool with shallow water that will reach up to your hip. In other words, it was basically a baby pool. When black people tried to enter white pools, they were brutally beaten. That's because segregation works in two ways. The first one is you have the law. For example, in the South, there were the Jim Crow laws, which allowed racial segregation by law. However, in the North, they didn't have that law. So they would beat black people with clubs, rocks, this, break their bones, set fire to their homes, and threaten their life, no matter what age or gender. To make it even more wild, the police encouraged this behavior. Comment below if that shocked you or not. But why was this happening? You know the short answer is racism, but here's the long answer. Racial segregation started when gender integration started, meaning women and men can now swim together because before they were separated. Basically, these white men didn't want these fine black men coming in and slinging that thing on white women. <laughs> they convinced their groups that black people were savages. And even though they didn't want to admit it, they knew that black people are just beautiful. Like, do you see how black people glow in the sun? I rest my case. So they didn't want white women to be hypnotized by the half naked black God that was blessing the water. One incident in 1964 showed how serious this was when young protesters jumped in a white only pool. Now listen to this. The hotel owner, James Brock, poured acid on them and inside the pool. After that, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 passed, which was a law to protect blacks from discrimination. I mean, barely, but you know. So because of that law, white people left the public swimming pools. This term is called white flight. Oh, now we gotta go? White people moved to the suburbs to live the American dream. This is how American families are living in their new home. One of the reasons why America pushed this so much was because these suburbs had private community pools. So now the community can make up their own rules. The only white signs turned to members only signs, or you were greeted with a high entry fee. And this, in other words, is called gentrification. This stemmed from race and now it started focusing on class. This was done so white communities could still get away with segregation. And if you were a poor white person, then that sucks for you too. Due to this, the public pools began closing down rapidly because people stopped caring about them since all the white people moved to the suburbs. And what I'm about to tell you is going to have you even more shocked. The stereotype shirts are now available for a limited time. Go get them now. Due to the pools closing down, Poor kids and black kids had less access to pools than the middle class and rich Americans. Just take a wild guess of how much access these groups have today. I'll give you three seconds to think. Three, two, one. There are over 10 million residential pools compared to 300K public pools in America. Comment below if that shocked you. Now take into consideration how many public pools are in white areas versus black areas, and that number will be even more depressing. 
Discrimination is still alive today. It's just done in different ways. Black people know it's almost impossible to ever find swim caps for their hair. I actually found one and I linked one down in the description below, so check that out. And we saw how the Olympics reacted when black swimmer Alice Daring wore a soul cap swim cap to fit her natural hair. That pushed a whole movement to ban and humiliate her. But listen up. Studies show that if a parent doesn't know how to swim, then their kid will have a 13% chance of learning how to swim. And get this, 10 people die every day from drowning in the United States. These are usually kids aged 11 to 14, and most of those kids are black. So if there are any parents or black people in general listening to this, what I'm about to say is for you. This is an attack on your life, your family's life, in your kids or future kids life. We tend to look at swimming as just a sport or something you do for fun, but it's truly a method of survival. With the constant rise of gentrification and sneaky ways to oppress people, it's clear they don't want you to know how to protect yourself or the black people you care about. So maybe this is your sign to learn how to swim because trust me, this was a sign for me. And for everyone else, white, Asian, etc., you are not safe either because oppression affects everyone. Remember, please give me a like and subscribe to help my channel grow and push the algorithm to show this to people who also need to hear this. I hope you liked this episode and I hope it made an impact for you. That's all I have for today. This has been Crystal Lake with Stereotype and I'll catch you in the next episode.